Hey folks, Ray from DCRemarker.com here. Today I've got the new Favero Asiamo power meter pedals. Uh, now you may know Favero from the B-Pro power meter pedals that came out two summers ago, and they kind of came out of, well, nowhere really. No one expected the B-Pro pedals at all. The company just plopped them out, like boom, they're there. Um, and astoundingly enough, they were actually accurate, which I, I know sounds weird, but more or less, for the most part, when I hear of new power meter companies, like you've never heard them before, uh, things are usually pretty rough at first, uh, especially if that company has no past experience in power meters at all, or even like much experience in the cycling realm. But Favero did good, and they came out with a power meter that was a pretty solid on a pedal standpoint, but it had some limitations. Number one was the installation was a little bit wonky. Uh, you had to use these special tools, which wasn't a huge deal like if you had it on one bike and it was only on one bike that was great but if you wanted to move it between bikes it wasn't really all that great um, because they also had a settling period as well which could take a ride or two uh, and then on top of that it was only amp plus which you know for most bike head units isn't a big deal but in the days now of iPhone apps and other things that require Bluetooth smart because they don't have amp plus in them that was a challenge so this is the Asioma I'm probably butchering the name but Mm, that's what they chose to name it, so that's probably their fault. Um, so in this case, there are two versions of it, uh, like there was with the original B-Pro pedals. There is the Uno, which is a left side or single-sided uh, pedal solution, and then there's the Duo, which is a dual-sided pedal solution. Uh, the prices are really impressive. In US dollars, the Duo is $735, and the single pedal solution is $459 that's effing unbelievable. Like to have a dual sided solution that is theoretically accurate for 735 is awesome. You've got the Watt Team system, which is at uh, basically 500 bucks for a dual sided solution. And that's pretty solid, but the installation is definitely a bit more complex there. Uh, and you know, there's some minor accuracy issues in, in very certain scenarios um, that are definitely be aware of. But this, they've got a really good history of being accurate on these pedals. So I'm hoping that just carries through to this unit right here. With that, this is just purely an unboxing video, so we're gonna walk through what's in this big box. It's actually pretty darn heavy. Uh, it's kind of not much smaller than a shoe box, um, but actually much heavier than a shoe box. This is the duo version right here. Um, so I'm gonna go and open this up. Uh, here's got just a standard sleeve right there, and you can see they've actually creatively done it so that um, the little, oops, the little dot right there for the red dot for duo versus uno, uh, so they can use the same sleeve for everything. Kind of smart. Uh, on the side here, on the back, sorry, not the side, I'm gonna move that out of the way. On the back right here, you can see the model number. In particular, you can see the AMP Plus IDs are listed right there, um, both the serial numbers as well of the left, left and the right side. Uh, so kind of cool. The AMP Plus ID you'll see in your Garmin or other AMP Plus head units, the same with like a Wahoo Bolt or something. Uh, so just keep that in mind, that's what that ID is there. You won't need to know it per se, but it's always handy to have. Inside, we have the pedals themselves. Uh, so uh, pretty cool that they've got a nice little tray on top here, really clean setup. Uh, I'm gonna take this tray up, up or remove it. Uh, you can see there's a zip tied to it, so we're gonna have to deal with that problem in a second. Inside the box here, we've got the manuals. So we're gonna take this stack of, this is one hell of a stack of manuals. Uh, and then we have on this side, the cleats. So these are using probably the, uh, the Expedo cleats, the RC7s, uh, the same thing that uh, the PowerTap P1s use as well. They're a look heel compatible cleat, but it's not like a perfect compatibility match. It may work for some people, but not for others. Uh, just use the cleats in your life a little, a little bit easier. Um, it's primarily like if you were to do a hard sprint or something, if you use the original look heel cleats in this or in the PowerTop P1s that you may um, pop out of them, whereas this solves that again. Very, very similar, but there's a slight difference there. Um, anyways, this over here is the battery charger. So if we remove this here, you can see it's a, uh, a dual USB port, and then here is the power cable portion that we'll talk about right now. And then next we have those power cable portions. And so you can see this here, this actually connects the pedal itself. So I'm gonna put this off the side. There's that one there and this one here. Uh, and we'll talk about how that connects the pedal in a moment. Then we've got two sets of washers. The washers go on the inside of the threads right there. And the reason you do that is you don't want this metal piece here to bend or flex against your crank arm. So you put this washer uh, right there in, in place of it. The general rule of thumb is that you'd rather be safe than sorry. So you always want an air gap between this piece of metal right there and your crank arm and the washers uh, solve that problem. Next, we have a bunch of power adapter thingies. And so each one of these is for different countries. This looks like the Euro adapter, for example. Uh, and then we've got here, this is the Americana and Canadian version. Next, we have the uh, British version, the UK. Um, they're big old clunky ass power adapter. And then we have, uh, I believe this is the, 
Australian one, I think. Um, I don't use this that often, but it's the, the funky one. So if you're the funky one, that's what you got right there. And then last but not least, we have a tool for whacking someone upside the head with. Um, we have the mother of all hex wrenches in here. This is a beast, like this is, is really actually impressive um, how big this is, but it's to go ahead and just simply use this to put your pedals on your bike. So pretty cool. What you will not notice in this box, and this is most important, is the funky ass tool they used to have on the first V Pro version. Uh, that is gone. Standard issue hex wrench, nothing fancy about it. Um, this is an eight mil hex wrench by the looks of it here. Uh, so that's that's the parts right there. So a couple things to note is that the battery charger here, if we go ahead and take this plastic uh, protective thing off, the way it works is the fact the Euro adapter, for example, I just would go ahead and place that like that, snaps in place, and then I have the two USB ports. The USB ports, you have one for each power pedal that you wanna charge up because they are rechargeable power meters. Um, so you go ahead and plug this in just like this, and then the other side for the other pedal. And then this will snap on essentially like that. Super simple. And then you do this for over here. You obviously plug this into a wall and you're good to go. Um, so that's that piece there. Let me find a tool to go ahead and snip this off right there. Somebody has stolen my wire cutters. Probably me. Go ahead and use these crappy ass Ikea scissors that aren't really gonna cut this. Seriously? Seriously, it's just a little tiny zip tie. Okay, so that is removed safely. Um, we just slide the pedals out, and there you go. Those are our pedals ready to roll. So again, we'll pop this down there, and then we'll go ahead and remove the scissors uh, from view. And here we have the pedals. Now, uh, the first thing you'll notice about the pedals, they do have the pods on them. Uh, so they are not podless like the P1s, but they're also thinner in the body of the pedal. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, they're kind of like the Vector 1 and Vector 2 pedals that also have a pod-like design on them. In the case of Vectors, the pods detach and go on the side of the crank arm there. Here, they're actually built into the pedals, so these are definitely better off than the Vector 1 and Vector 2. Not quite as clean looking, in my opinion, as the PowerTap uh, P1s, but again, it's not really a huge deal. They're pods I've used them before, uh, no problems there. So let's look real quick at the weights here. Um, I've got my handy dandy scale right here, and I'm gonna pop that on, turn it on. Okay, so zero grams. Uh, this is the left pedal here, 150 grams, and then the right pedal, of course, at 150 grams as well. You will technically wanna to toss a washer or two in there, so we'll do that just for fun. Uh, so in this case, if you put, um, let's just say the worst case scenario is two washers, that would be one whole gram, so not very much. Um, now, to compare that over here to the PowerTap P1 pedals, as I'm dropping their washers off, um, here is one with one washer, which is what I typically use mine on. In this case, it's 218 grams. Again, for a reminder, 218 versus 150 grams. That's a pretty big difference, especially when you do this and go, this is 300 grams straight up versus the both of these here is 435 grams. Uh, so uh, a pretty significant difference in weight right there between these two units. Uh, and then if we look at these real quick, pretty straightforward, it talks about the sensor lights. So you can see those are right uh, under here. They're in this little area right there below this, the charging port. Uh, you won't be able to see them until they turn on, of course. And then we have the spindle piece there. This is the Amp Plus and Bluetooth Smart logo. The left icon, that's the charging port. And then just it's pretty much a standard pedal beyond that. And so the actual um, force sensing portion is inside the pedal uh, spindle right there. So it's down this middle portion. Um, that's where it goes ahead and it measures your power output. Okay, so with the books all taken care of, at this point, we're ready to go and get it installed. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna clean things up here and we'll start on the installation on the bike. Okay, so here we are with the bike. I'm gonna install it on my tri bike for right now. But I'm actually gonna swap back and forth between bikes a bunch on purpose to see how well it handles swapping between bikes. One of the challenges I mentioned before with the original Beat Pro pedals was the fact that it took a ride or two to stabilize. So I wanna see how well this works. And we're gonna start off with the tri bike and then pretty much every two days, I'm gonna switch back and forth to uh, my road bike. So I've got the two pedals right here. I've got the two washers. Uh, this is really super simple. Go ahead and take the washer, slide it over the back there. And then at this point, just simply thread it onto this using the included uh, wrench and we are good to go. It's really, 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 really simple. Probably would have been easier if I chose a lower down location on these arms, but uh, let's do this. 
and then use this to simply tighten it up again. So there we go. Nothing fancy, just nice and like normal tight. Do the same thing for the other side here. Again, take this, the washer, slide it over. There we go. And then into this right there. And again, I just tighten this up nice and snug. There we go. And we're done. That's, that's it really. We're done installing the pedals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all kitted up and uh, we're gonna go for a ride on this bike here right now. I've got the uh, FSA Power Box. That's basically like a Power to Max variant. And then I've got obviously the pedals that's installed and I have a new production version of the Elite Diretto. Um, so we're gonna see how things go from a power standpoint and then we'll look at the files afterwards. Now there's one more thing we need to do is to first activate the SEMA pedals, which you do using an iPhone or Android app. If you don't have either of those, you are out of luck. They will not transmit power or cadence until you do that activation. Uh, after that, you wanna go ahead and add them to your head unit. You'll have to add a power meter, uh, whether it be a Garmin or Wahoo, anything you have, you need to add it to either Bluetooth Smart Amp Plus. Um, and then you wanna go in and make sure your crank like the set. In my case, it's 175 millimeters. Most people it's 172.5, that's super important. And then last but not least, you wanna go into the cal calibration menu, tap calibrate, and do a zero offset, um, which gets those pedals all ready to roll. Again, this whole thing takes almost as much time as it took me to tell you about it, which is about 35 seconds, but it is important. And now off to Zwift to start my ride. With the ride all finished up, I've got all the files into the DCR analyzer. Now I had three power meters on this bike. I had the Asioma pedals, I had an FSA power box, and then I had the Diretto um, trainer that you see there as well, which actually has a power meter inside of it. Now, unfortunately, the Garmin was supposed to record in the FSA power box, instead recorded the Diretto. Totally my fault, and I didn't catch it till later on. Um, so we only have two files to look at, but that's all right. Uh, the Diretto is, is pretty darn accurate. So what we see here is my workout. Um, this is just a, a one of the, it's called John's Short Mix on Zwift, in case you're looking for it. Uh, it's got these kind of peaks and valleys that you see right here, these big uh, interval efforts. Uh, you know, 400 some odd watts there, 400 again, and then these spikes up to 800 watts uh, three times, and then just some kind of some steady state work here. Uh, now, what I is I did calibrate all the units ahead of time, um, but then I did it again right here at the 11 minute marker. You can see that calibration I did, the zero offset of the Asioma pedals. And then here at the 23 minute marker, I did it for the Diretto because um, I wanted to validate that actually was set and synced. And you see that after this point when I did it for the Diretto one more time there, that's when things were just like beautifully perfect between these two. Um, across this though, they look really nice. Like if we look at these sprints right here, I'm gonna just zoom in on this right there. You see the two are very, very close. You're gonna see very slight differences on the ups and downs because of the way uh, the different power meters both capture and transmit power. Um, but this is you know within a couple of seconds of each other. Looks really, really smooth right here on these peaks. We don't see any anything of issue. This little drop right there of the Asomo, uh, it's hard to tell what that was, whether that was the head unit or the power meter pedals. I haven't seen it in other data yet, so um, I'm not super concerned about that at the moment. And then if we look at this after I did the uh, final calibration of the direct so you see things are really, really clean between these. Again, you're gonna see this kind of slight differences because of the fact that your different recording rates uh, between different units and it's kind of going up and down a lot here uh, as it's stabilizing or I'm trying to stabilize. Uh, so otherwise you'll see this looks pretty solid. Because I haven't really finished editing this video until after I did yet another ride later on, this is a couple hour ride uh, that I have. You can see right here if I zoom all the way out. They did this weekend. Uh, I'm gonna zoom into one section that's a little bit cleaner to look at. Uh, and you can see here, this is three power meters. There is the FSA power box, a power tap G3 hub, and the Asiyama pedals. Uh, and this just looks really, really nice. Like there's no, uh, nothing, nobody's out of line here for the most part. Um, it's it's super clean. Uh, so that's, that's good stuff. I'll link to this down in the description field. Actually, I'll link to both of these power files. So if you wanna go and dive into it and analyze yourself, you can do that. Uh, again, this is just all using the DCR analyzer. You can even go down to the bottom 
bottom here and actually download uh, the files right there if you wanted to do that and look at the files yourself. Okay, folks, there you go. A first ride look at the new Favero Asioma Duo pedals. Uh, I'd say so far so good. Uh, with that, thanks for watching. Go and check the link down below for the full kind of preview post right now and then soon the in-depth review. I'll swap out the link once that's up. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on there as well as the like button. There is a crap ton of new stuff coming uh, over the next three or so weeks, sports technology stuff, uh, all sorts of things across all sorts of categories. So you do not want to miss it. Have a good one.